No, there we go. There we go. Got it. Yeah, seriously. Okay. <laughs> so we are just going to be chatting just like we would if we had a cup of coffee together. Great. Okay. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. Oh, but I do want to ask you, so this is the first question. If you could spread a message across the world, is that the one you want me to start with? Um, I mean, you can start wherever you want. How about? Because even what is your relationship like with fear? Mm -hmm. What is the most worthwhile thing you've put your time into? Something that changed the course of your life. Oh, these are very profound, aren't they? Okay, I'll just do it then. And it's just Equus Empowerment. So my business is Leah Dick Equus Attuned. My program is Equus uh, Empowered. Okay, so Equus Empowered is how we should do the podcast then? Okay, okay, let's just roll with it then. Well, do oh. Leah Dick Equus Attuned. That's my business name. Okay. Okay. And then, then the program that. itself is Equus Empowered, and I can kind of chat about that at the end. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Equine Connection podcast. We are so very excited to have our beautiful, our wonderful. She is the star to us for the foundation of the welfare of the horse. It is Leah Dick, and Leah Dick's business is uh, Leah Dick in Tuned. And of course, from that, she has a course that every single human on this earth who has a horse or wants to have a horse definitely wants to be a part of this journey. So welcome, 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 Leah. We're so excited to have you here today. Thank you. Yes. So I, honestly, I get a little choked up every time you do those beautiful uh, introductions. Um, so thank you. I'm honored that you asked me at all. And uh, yeah, really happy to be here. It's so true though. Oh, I'm sorry. oh Leah, I'm so sorry. How, can you cut this right. out? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, is Lola and Brandon going out? Oh, yes. Yeah, he can let out the other horses. Oh my goodness. Okay, good thing she's, see? Chaos, but that's okay. We are women who can make things happen. So yeah, you know, it's, but it's the truth. And this is why I love always working with you. You were just so, you're so pure on this earth. And I think that's why it's so lovely to learn from you. And you make, you're a horse. You're, you never judge any of us for maybe doing the not so right thing because you're about teaching and learning. So I do have a few kind of deep questions for you. Mm. So my first question to you is, if you could spread a message across the world, one that people would listen to, what would your message say? I actually love how you just transitioned into that because um, even the way that you said uh, how how you feel when you're maybe around me, like, like a horse um, and without judgment and trying to be open. And that's something that I actually have been very intentional about because there's been times in my life where I've been pretty narrow-minded and uh, focused and maybe not as open and definitely have had some judgment. So I'm really grateful that that's how um, you perceive me because that's uh, intentional on my part. And <clears throat> along that journey of sort of learning that self about, uh, learning those things about, my, excuse me, learning <laughs> those things about myself, um, I really came to the realization and this is what I would share if I could tell anybody anything is just to remind everyone that you are incredibly, immensely, unfathomably powerful. You already have everything within you that you need and nature, animals, horses, of course, and other beings can help you attune to this sort of immense power and continue to strengthen your link to what is for me source. Um, you're, you're just an extension of it. So just that reminder that you are so powerful and the more we can empower ourselves, um, the, the great 
greater growth that we have. And the more we grow, the more we can share with others. And it just ripples out in such a profoundly uh, impactful way. Wow. What a stunning, beautiful message. Like, yeah, shivers. That yeah. is so, so beautiful. And I hope all of those who needed to hear that, that message will hear and feel that because that is so true. So another question for you, what is your relationship like with fear? So I have to say, I, I want to have a good answer for this because <laughs> um, so many of the people I admire choose a question like this and they have a great answer for it. And it always makes me think. Um, so I'm, I guess I'm not a hundred percent there yet, but this question is important to me because the truth is that I'm working on it still. Um, I'll say that in terms of triggers, which for me often are full of fear, uh, I've learned not to hide or run from them at all. So my intention is to head straight into them. I want my life to be full and joyful and just not ruled by anything that might trigger me or make me want to hide or get angry or you know become dysregulated, those sorts of things. So um, I intend to allow myself to learn from those triggers, from those fears. So why do I have them? Why do I have these big feelings around them? Um, what can I learn from this particular trigger and this feeling? And, and how do I grow and get stronger? So I've really learned, you know, there's been times in my life in the past too, where you'd be triggered and I might just react emotionally or I'd be triggered and want to shrink into myself and, and avoid it. And I've really learned and been intentional that I actually, I want to go toward those triggers because I, I want them to dissipate and I want to learn the lesson that is in every one of those situations. And those, those big feelings, those big emotions that come up are just my body and my mind talking to me. They're just further communications, exactly the same way we do with horses for them. And we want to dig a little deeper. So that's what I've really tried to do with myself. And for sure, the triggers for me are, um, many of them are fear-based. So that, yeah. Answer. Wow. No, that that's really interesting. You know, I, I always taught this to my daughters to feel the fear and do it anyways. And it's kind of like you're diving right on in because unlike a horse whose only fear is of being eaten, we as humans have many fears and most are untrue. So it's really a cool concept to feel that fear dive right into it because most times the fear that we thought might have existed actually doesn't even exist at all. So That's I true. really love that. That is yeah, all those limiting beliefs we put on ourselves, right? Isn't yeah. that the truth? Mm. Okay. I'm going to uh, pass you over. This podcast is kind of exciting because our fan base who's following us, you get not only myself, Carrie Fulmack here at the Equine Connection, totally forgot to tell you that. But of course, <laughs> my uh, colleague, Carolyn Charles is going to be taking over as well. So are you ready then, Charles? I'm ready as I'll ever be. Okay. So these are, because you're going to take this piece out. So this is, we're going to go with those next three questions. Number three. And then we go to B and C. Okay. Okay. And you started at what time? Uh, well, it should tell you. I think we started about 116, 117. Okay. Something like that. Thank you so much, Leah. Love you too. Thank death. you. Love you too. Have a great day. Okay, good. You too, hon. Okay. All right. So you're ready? I think so. Okay. Yeah. That one there. Leah will guide me if need be, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Good woman that way. Yep. Okay. There we are. Okay. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. <laughs> it's been chaos today, Leah. That's what I hear. Yes. But it's good to see your lovely face. You always bring me nice calm. <laughs> okay. We'll go right into it then. So what is the most worthwhile thing that you've put your time into something that really kind of changed the course of your life? This is a tough one because there are so many things to choose from, but I, I really had to sort of ponder what brought me closest maybe to um, what I feel is part of my life's purpose. And I'd say meeting my friend, Laura Hines, 
uh, well over a decade ago and having her facilitate an interaction with the horse changed the course of my life. It, it really was like just all the pieces came together and I could start to see my life and my purpose. All, it was just like a zipper. All, all just came right together and a light bulb moment and all of those things. And so that decade of studying of horse culture and allowing the energetic interactions that horses will offer um, on myself and then facilitating them with others is really one of the most worthwhile things I've ever done. And it allows me to be of service to these incredible equine beings that we have the honor of sharing space with, um, as well as the beings in human form currently um, that can heal and grow and learn about themselves and learn about others and the environment and other beings um, from these particular interactions. So that, that, you know, we'd call it chance, but I don't, I never think that, you know, the, yes. we were in alignment and yeah, there was uh, never a coincidence. Uh, so this meeting with, with Laura really changed the course of my life and it was worthwhile to continue to dive more deeply into that experience. That's yeah, isn't it funny the people that we meet along the way? Well, I mean, you did something very similar for us, right? To open us to completely, well, for me especially, to just a different way of comprehending things and thinking of things rather than being quite so rigid, we'll say, is that maybe, <laughs> maybe that's, like, I have been there before. Yeah, exactly. That's amazing. So, and this is a hard question, I think, uh, but what is the accomplishment that you're most proud of? Yeah, that one is actually fairly easy to answer. And, and honestly, it's the raising of my daughters. And I'll actually get a little bit true. <laughs> All right, I would too. <laughs> yeah, that makes me emotional. It's very, very important to me. Um, that's my life's work, really. Um, my oldest daughter, I did almost exclusively raise by myself at a young age. Um, and my youngest daughter, my husband was around as much as he could be, but he did work away two thirds of our life together. So I was on my own with two girls and a full farm to run. And we worked hard together. And my family is my absolute priority. There is nothing more important to me than them. Um, it's funny because when I was a kid, I had no intention of having children. This was not on my radar. If they, you know, when people asked me, I was like, no. I'm never having kids. I'm going to be a vet. Um, I, you know, I much preferred to spend my time with animals. Um, so school was easy for me. And I kind of always kept in mind the requirements for vet school, but the universe had other plans. And I had my daughter fairly young and, and immediately it was just so easy. I just shifted my focus to her. And now I'm so glad I didn't become a vet because other pathways opened up that have aligned with my soul much more clearly. So my girls, I'm, I'm the most proud of that accomplishment of, of raising them. And now I have a granddaughter and get to spend, she's here actually, right, right in the other room. And yeah. So, so I'm most proud of that. That's amazing. And that's a fabulous answer, right? Like, cause that's how we pass on all of the good things that we know and maybe get to nip in the bud some of the things that we could have worked on right but we see these little humans grow into well big humans and have their own babies and all those things and you just get to see what a fabulous job you've done and you have your girls are amazing thank you amazing the job. other thing I think about parenting too is it'll make you grow and growth and contribution are very important to me but if you want to do a good job as a parent, you are going to be pushed and pulled and stretched and have all the, just like you said, um, you know, maybe change some generational habits or become aware of them, all of those things. So you will grow as a parent or being in a long-term relationship or being with horses, or, you know, there's just so many opportunities for us to uh, become better, higher versions of ourselves and, and raising children is one of those. I've always said that there are two things that have humbled me very much in life. And the first one, one is horses. And the other one is my daughter, <laughs> because there is no greater mirror than the one standing right in front of you. That's a small version of yourself. <laughs> oh, that's, that is a great way to put it. Yeah. So 
we've read, well, you've recommended lots of books to us and that sort of thing in the past that we've been able to go through that have helped us a lot with our journey with horses and like for myself personally and figuring out things for myself as well. But is there a favorite one that you would recommend or not necessarily even that everybody has to read, but something that you, that kind of has the impact? Cause I know that you've recommended a lot to us in the past that have had super impacts. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge nerd. I love books, love them. Like I have probably hundreds of books <laughs> and uh, I knew I need to create more time in my life to read more of them. But uh, my favorite fictional series, this is an aside, is Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon. If you haven't read them, you need to. They are way better than the TV show. It's, um, there's so much history in there. It's really interesting. Oh, um, but in terms of a, you should read this book um, because it will enhance your well-being um, is the You Can Heal Your Life book by Louise Hay. And I actually mail this book to every one of my students. Um, it's on the recommended leading or reading list for my program, Equus Empowered. It's really just empowering information that goes hand in hand with the knowledge that we do have everything inside us that we need. Um, there is an emotional component to dis-ease. And once we discover that and heal the emotion along with the physiology, you know, along with the body, we can truly become well. Um, so for me, that is a very powerful little book and I reference it often. That's amazing. Yeah. And I think having that recognition is something that so many of us have to grow into that we are our own we're enemy and we're our own best friend at the same time because we do have everything that we need it's just a matter of figuring out maybe where some of the other stuff is coming from sometimes because it might not be from the outside sources we think sometimes it's just from within us in the first place too and I know I've learned a lot of that from you too (laughs) (laughs) well and our body is just always speaking to us every little ailment or ache or pain or uh, emotion coming through it's just feedback Mm -hmm. and if we can start to dig in, especially when we get the minor ones, um, we get a cold, maybe we're a little overwhelmed. Our body is really just saying, Hey, you need a little time and we can maybe catch it before we even get the cold. You know, you start to, um, get ahead of some of those things. So it's, yes, some pretty, uh, subtle, but also really powerful information. If we can catch it when it's subtle, then the body doesn't need to yell at us quite so loudly. Cause sometimes you let it go when it yells real loud. <laughs> <laughs> it leaves you in a bit of a rough yeah. to that point. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go to Carrie's notes. I'll edit this too. Mutual balance mm-hmm. within horse, horse culture. Okay. So we're going to switch back to the horsey side of things now too. Well, there's more questions. If, if you want to ask any more of those questions, those are just kind of the ones I chose and prepared, but if you like that, there's a well, list of more in front of me. So she had clearly had a plan here. <laughs> okay. So mutual balancing with horse culture. Okay. Uh, who is that itchy as the same time? Yeah. I'm saying, oh, I know what she's saying now. I have to read and carry it. Okay. <laughs> so bringing it back to the horse side of things as well, because we have gained so much knowledge from you over the years about horses and about the energy side with horses as well. One thing that we ask a lot, or, and maybe you can speak to a little bit, is who could possibly be that itchy in the same place all the time? And what really is that itch piece? right? Because it's not necessarily just being scratchy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess this actually goes back to that question we were talking about earlier, you know, that piece that I felt was so worthwhile. And for me, it really was that decade of studying horse culture and something that really stood out quite loudly to me was um, the interactions from horse to horse, specifically what we would often call mutual grooming as Mm -hmm as horse people, but it's, it's about looking a little deeper because like you just said, who's that itchy at the same time in the same place. Um, and then what is the science of an itch? So we know the general definition of an itch is either an abundance or a stasis. So sort of stuck, um, energy in an area. Mm-hmm. Yes. It could be from a dermatitis on the outside. Uh, but sometimes you get just an itch that, that crops up. So what is that about? Well, we'll have an abundance of energy or some energy will be stuck. So are the horses feeling an itch potentially, you know, if there's lots of mosquitoes and bugs about it, it could be that they're, they're itchy from something external, 
But quite often, if you really watch them, there's not an external stimulus. So it's really about paying attention to the placements that the horses are scratching each other. And you'll notice they will use their muzzle. Sometimes they'll go with their teeth and even more so sometimes they go really strongly with their teeth. Um, so once we start to really dig deeper and discover what is in that area that those horses are constantly interacting with on each other or asking for from another horse, we really start to get the ability to have some further insight into what's going on for that individual horse, what's going on for the herd, potentially what's going on for their environment, for the, for the other beings around them. Um, and there's a fair bit of scientific theory that goes along with all of the energy, with energy centers within our body, within the fascia within our body, um, and how that whole piece uh, is all connected. So it's, it's horse culture. They are prey animals, they're herd animals. It's their culture of collaboration and safety that they work on each other for wellness and balance. If they aren't balanced and they aren't well, they're attracting the attention of predators. So horses will work incredibly collaboratively with and for each other. And secondarily, they will start to offer that exact same um, exchange to people. And I, and I love, well, we all love that piece for anybody who's been able to be a part of any of those interactions where they do offer it to us as well. There's something that's just, you can't really replicate that feeling anywhere else when a horse works on you. It's just a very different piece of it because it's so authentic and it's not like it's drawing out or you have to talk about anything or do anything like that. It's just them right in that moment. And they do offer those pieces, but you have to be able to stop and listen to actually be able to know that they're offering or anything else that goes along with that too, right? What are some of the ways that we can understand when our horses are offering to us? Yeah, I love that question. So just as you said, horses will offer. Um, the first part often starts with just studying some of their horse culture. Just, just take some time to go sit in the bale, go watch them, sit in the grass, um, hand graze them you know just spend that time to watch how they interact with each other and then you'll start to see how they offer between horse so horse to horse and then you'll start to recognize when they offer the same to people so one way that horses will offer these interactions is something that is actually a little bit out of norm we discussed that they're prey animals prey animals do everything on a curve their eyes are on the side of their head Predators do things usually in straight lines, but when horses are intentionally interacting, they may approach a little bit on a curve, but it'll be very intentional. They'll be generally in a straight line toward you. Usually head will be down and they'll often start to interact with our hands first. Um, for horses, that is the extension of the heart meridian runs down there and to the heart energy center as well. So we do know that it's about bonding, love of self and others. Uh, and then they will start to work other areas of the body. But the, the main way you'll know that they're starting to offer an interaction is to really start to pay attention to, um, is this a horse coming into my space with the intention of offering something or is this a horse barging into my space making uncomfortable contact something like that there will be a very different feeling and of course along with all of this there's leadership and boundaries and facilitation is all still very important but as horse people were often raised to feel we're never they should never put their mouths on us and and that is true and important when we're looking at it from a safety and leadership perspective. But it's also about tuning in and paying attention to how is the horse coming into our space? Um, how are they approaching? Is this an intentional interaction? Um, so there's lots of, and, and I go into this in my program, Equus Empowered, to look for the specific cues, um, but also really to tune into yourself tune into your intuitive abilities because that's a big portion between horse and human horses are nonverbal mm -hmm. and intuition really is a sixth sense for them. It's a language for them. It's a huge barometer to their own safety. 
So horses use their intuitive abilities a lot and they can enhance ours um, substantially. So tuning into your intuitive abilities as well when, when your horse is approaching you is um, a very big tool. Yeah, that awareness piece of even where you're at, right? So like, yes. remember the first yep. time we learned about this from you, we came back and we were like, okay, come talk to us horses. And they were <laughs> like, mm, <laughs> that's not really how this works, right? You do have to be in a in a state that it's working for both you and them, not just an expectation place, you know, like come heal me kind of thing. That's not really how it all rolls. You have to be in that awareness and have your intuitive kind of tuned in to what they're actually asking you to Absolutely. And there's also a piece of relationship building there because a lot of our horses too have been shut down over their lives because as horse people were trying to always do the right thing. So we don't always recognize when a horse might be offering. And so we're telling them no very often and eventually they'll stop offering. And if they don't have other horses in order to do these type of interactions with them, let's say they're segregated on their own, um, they actually might start to manifest some of those emotional uh, root causes for physical manifestations Absolutely. or dis-ease. So it's a really important part of their culture that can be incredibly beneficial to us. Yeah. And then secondarily, so that beneficial to us part is when we allow, so A, when we observe and then we start to identify the offerings mm -hmm. and then B, we allow the interactions. C, we start to understand the self-insight and self-awareness that comes from int interaction. Part of that will come with increasing intuitive ability, but more so we actually can just pay attention to the physical placements that the horses may be touching on us or how they may align their own bodies with us, how they hold space. Um, all of these, there are very clear pointed kind of markers to guide us down that self-awareness and self-insight piece. So for ourselves, but as equine professionals, it's also something that we can facilitate on our own clients. Absolutely. And it is beautiful to be able to do so because it's, again, it's not us as facilitators giving them the answers or telling them, here's everything you got to fix with your life. It's again, that internal piece where this is where this could be or what this, you know, might bring an awareness to but it's still the person having that piece to figure it out for themselves. And that's where the facilitation right, is very, very important to that. It's not about telling them the answers. Mm -hmm. It's about discovering our own and working with the horses to do so. Hence, you have all the answers and information you need inside you, all the power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And on top of that, though, even if we missed that self-insight or self-awareness piece, the horse is going to have done an exchange. So we can go through all the scientific theories of all of that energetic exchange as well um, at another time, but the horse will have created some shift within the energy fields, within the bio, um, myofascial system, within all of those energy centers that will have a very healing um, and beneficial effect for the person. So the energetic exchange has taken place already. So it's kind of twofold. You'll get the exchange and you'll get some self insight and awareness. And that's the piece we'll take outside of the barn with us to continue to work on um, personally. I love that. Leah, I could talk to you forever. <laughs> like, I just always want to keep pulling more and more knowledge from your head every time that I talk to you, because you do have such a way of saying it that even the grown skeptics as myself can understand what it means and that it is a piece that has some factual balance within that as well, right? And you definitely bring, have brought a whole new side to my life and to how I think about things, especially in the energy side of world. And I think you could do that for so, so many other people as well, who get stuck a little bit in the linear thinking side of things, because you just have such a lovely way of presenting it always. Well, thank you. I'm a very linear thinker traditionally myself. <laughs> so I had to prove it to myself first, ultimately. And then when I understood it for myself, then I just developed, you understand the language then, and that's when you can start to share it with others. And that's also where it's beneficial from um, a facilitator standpoint with our clients. So you start to develop the language to be able to explain the interactions. I love mm -hmm. that. Well, just before we wrap up here, if you want to just give everybody your um, website again and the course, because I'd love for people to be able to go and get that information from you as well. It's a phenomenal course too. 
Thank you. Yeah, probably the best way to get a hold of me is on my website. So it's just leahdick.com. Um, my Facebook page, which I am just not great at the social media, but I'll step it up here at some point, um, is Leah Dick Equus Attuned. So that's uh, my business name. And then I have a couple of programs, but the ones that are the one that I'm mostly focused on now is called Equus Empowered. And I will be opening some groups here in um, February, April, and June. Amazing. Well, we'll put your links in here as well. So people have easy access to you, but thank you so, so much for coming on. I feel like we should be, we'll set up a part two because I just want to pull more brain from your, more brain, more knowledge from your brain. Clearly I'm <laughs> running out of my own. <laughs> thank you, Carolyn. And honestly, you and Carrie have been such a influence in my life. You have opened so many doors for me and I'm very, very grateful to have you both in my life. Oh, and we're very, very grateful for you too. So thank you so, so much again. And then maybe we can set up a time to do another one. So I, because so now I have more questions too. Love it. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you so much, Leah. And we will talk to you very, very soon. Go check out her website and make sure that you check out her courses as well, because they are phenomenal, phenomenal courses. Thank you.